uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, if you don't mind. I'm, I'm kind of the type that starts talking and don't know when to quit. So if you get tired of me, just say, okay, we're done. But, uh, I'm Lisa Hancock, and I'm the Public Education and Volunteer Specialist with the Area Agency on Aging. That is an agency that your tax dollars pay for. So I am doing a job for you. And I hope I do a good job today to help you all understand a little more about Medicare and maybe some of the changes that we will be seeing in 2019. Doesn't that sound funny? I never thought I would live to, to see 2019, much less 18. So, you know, when you're young, you think you'll never get to be old enough to leave home and and uh, do the things your parents won't let you do. So uh, I'm glad to be aging. You know, it happens to everyone. If we're not aging, we're dead. So <laughs> aging is not such a bad thing. It's not easy. It's not for sissies. That's what people say. Uh, because as we age, these bodies wear out, don't they? They don't last as long as we want them to. I, I just wish my body could do what my mind thinks it can. <laughs> That's what I say a lot. But I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I did pass out, or I did, if we had some wonderful people helping, and we passed out these cards. And what's nice about these is you can tear off the bottom and put it in your wallet uh, and keep it with you. If you ever need anything from us, our agency, because... Uh, we do a lot of things. We serve the top 26 counties, and you all are about as the top as we get. So, Booker, I believe we go over to there too, but um, y'all are way up yonder, and uh, we're glad to be here. I brought a volunteer with me one time, and she said, where are you taking me? <laughs> she had never been to Periston, so didn't realize that y'all were still a part of Texas. But we're glad to be here, and uh, we certainly want to be available to you to help you with any of your Medicare needs. As benefits counselors, you all, some of you got a brochure about benefits counseling. Um, that is not a psychiatric counseling service. We don't do that. We just help you with your benefits. And your benefits, uh, what would be benefits? What are your benefits? Your Social Security, right? Your, uh, maybe your retirement or pension from your work. Uh, any of those benefits. What if you make, you know, just... You worked hard all your life, but you never made very much money. A lot of people did, right? And I mean, I've been working since I was 16 years old. And when I started at 16, my first job, I made a dollar an hour. You know? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. And of course, it was a part-time job. It wasn't a full-time job. And it wasn't one that required a college degree, thank goodness. I was just wrapping gifts at the jewelry store in Vernon. So, but I thought that was fun to have a job at 16 and make my own money. So I could buy my, I, I bought a record player. And it was called the Angler. I don't know if y'all remember. Some of y'all do. But the Angler was angled and it had a turntable and an eight track cassette and a radio all in one unit. And uh, I bought that as much, you know, as soon as I could get any money to buy something. And I remember I actually had it, um, I got a loan at the bank because my mother and dad wanted me to establish some credit. You know, I think it was around $168 or something, you know. So they were teaching me or trying to. Uh, maybe that was not a good thing to teach because I learned I could borrow money and get what I wanted. You know? It's better to save first and then pay it. But uh, I learned that the hard way. So benefits are uh, kind of confusing sometimes because Medicare comes along at what age? How old do you have to be to be on Medicare? 65, that's right. Or if you're disabled for 24 months, then you can start drawing your Medicare. Or if you have end-stage renal disease or ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, that is automatic. You get on Medicare automatically with 
kidney failure and ALS. So those are the only two real reasons to get on automatically, or I shouldn't say reasons, but diagnoses. So that's uh, basically who qualifies for Medicare. Now, what about Social Security benefits? When can you start drawing that? 62, that's right. Y'all, we've got some smart people in here. Y'all don't need me. So 62 years old, and I am 62 as of August 31st, and I'm failing it. You know, I'm like, oh, one more day, am I going to make it to 65, you know? And, you know, the main reason I want to make it to 65 is so I can have Medicare. That's right. I don't want to pay for insurance because it's too high between 62 and 65. So you have to wait till you're 65 to get Medicare unless you're disabled. So those are the kind of the benefits that we talk about. And then, you know, besides Medicare, what else do you need when you get on Medicare? Do you need anything else? A supplement. A supplement. Yeah, why? What does Medicare pay? 80 percent. Yeah, and that's that's great, isn't it? But man, I wish they pay 100. Because why? What happens if you don't have a supplement? Yeah, it's out of pocket. You pay the the 20 percent and the deductibles. You have a big Part A deductible, don't you? It's like thirteen hundred, isn't it? What do you know what it is? Thirteen forty. Thirteen forty. Okay. And uh, that's a for me. That's a lot of money. Remember, I had to uh, get a loan to buy a hundred and sixty-eight dollar record player. <laughs> so thirteen forty uh, deductible for my insurance would be a lot out of pocket for me. And then, uh, of course, I make more than a dollar an hour now, but it takes up to live on, doesn't it? And then you have your deductible for Part B. Part A is your medical, I mean your hospital, right? Mm -hmm. You have that deductible. Part B is your medical. What's different about Part B? I have a question. 1340 is deductible for the Part A? Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. And That is on this sheet. Okay, yeah, it is. Very good. Hey, you're smart. You looked on the sheet. And I didn't even mention that your costs are listed. I printed off that, uh, the 2018 Medicare amounts. And the reason I had to do 2018 is because they don't have 2019 out yet. Okay? But as soon as they do, y'all have a wealth of information from a young lady here in Perryton. Miss Candy Pickett, yes, she is a certified benefits counselor just like me and like the other people in our office. So if she doesn't know, guess who she calls? Us, right? So, and if we don't know, we have somebody to call too. We have the Texas Legal Service Center out of Austin who is our trainer and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid and the Texas Health and Human Services. We're trained by three different units in the state of Texas. And so we have those direct lines to find out the answer if we don't know those. And we also have lots of material. I think I passed out a lot to y'all today. But uh, don't hesitate to ask Candy. And if Candy doesn't know, like I said, she's not too ashamed to ask us. And if we don't know, we're not ashamed to ask somebody else. So we will eventually get you the answers. Now, I also printed off the fact sheet from CMS. That's the Center for <coughs> Medicare and Medicaid. Now, this is for the whole state of Texas. It kind of gives information about Medicare in Texas. And it's, I, yeah, I'm not going to read to you, but I will say in the state of Texas, for 2019, they have 211 Medicare Advantage plans. Now, we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, 100% of people with Medicare have access to Medicare Advantage plans this time. Now, the difference is when it, Advantage plans first came out, they were only available to certain areas of Texas. The very first time it came to the panhandle, we only had five counties that they were eligible to get a Medicare Advantage plan. Well, that's changed now. They're offered everywhere. Okay, there is a zero dollar is the lowest premium 
for the Medicare Advantage Plan. Let me tell you about that. The Advantage plans that are zero premiums are usually what they call HMOs, or Health Maintenance Organizations. And those, you have to stay within that network to get the benefit, okay? I'll tell you, I, and I'm, I'm correct about that, do y'all accept Advantage plans in Perryton at this hospital? You are not contracted, okay. So that's the difference, and you have to make sure, see, if you enroll in a Plan C or an Advantage plan, you want to make sure that your hospital and doctors will accept it, right? And if they don't, and you don't want to change, then don't enroll in it. And I want to tell you the secret to these. They're sending you things in your mailbox. You're probably getting 10 things a day about Advantage plans and Part D plans. and I mean, they just I slam y'all. And I'm sorry, but we can't control that, I guess. But uh, they want you to sign up with them. Why do you think that? Do what? Money. Yeah. They get a commission for your buying that plan, for you signing up for that plan. So they get your money because, you know, if they sell 100 plans, they're going to get a commission off of each one they sell, which is fine. You know, I, my dad was an insurance agent. I don't want to take business away from insurance agents at all. They're very valuable. Uh, but it is, you know, that's their business. And that's okay. They have the right to market, y'all. But they do have rules through CMS and Texas Legal Service Center. They set up very strict rules on how those plans are sold. But the Advantage plans, they're an advantage, but not always for the customer. They're an advantage because they get a higher commission for those. Okay? So I'm just telling you that. I, like I said, if your best friend is an insurance agent, talk to them about it. Tell them, you know, well, I know about these, but I, I want you to tell me more. They know a lot about the products they sell, and that's great. They need to. But you need to get the, the I's dotted and the T's crossed before you sign up for it, just so you know what you're getting, okay? Because sometimes they don't cover everything, all right? They have 27 states right now. If you think about Texas. <coughs> 27 Part D plans. That's not very many, is it? 27 prescription plans. That's a Part D. D is for drugs. And they, you know, they call them standalone prescription drug plans. Because Advantage plans offer the prescriptions with their plan too. Okay? And then 100% of people with standalone Medicare prescription drug plans have access to a plan with a lower premium than what they paid in 2018. So that's important, and that's what, probably the most important thing I want to let Medicare beneficiaries know, is that the plans change every year. Even if you've been with Aetna or Humana or uh, Care Improvement Plus or uh, Silver Script, whoever your plan D is with, you need to look and see every year if that's going to cover your needs, how much is it going to cost, and can you afford it? And, you know, the main thing is, uh, are your medications covered on your plan? Now, they're required to send you what they call an ANOC, which is an Annual Notice of Change. In other words, if your, your formulary has changed, and that's the drug formulary. It's a list of medications that they say they'll cover. And then they put them as a Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4. And the, the higher the tier, the more your out-of-pocket's going to be, right? Because that's a more expensive medication. So be sure and remember that that notice of change, you're supposed to be notified. If you're not, call them and say, are what, what are y'all going to do this year with my plan? Because I, I don't know if I want to stay with y'all. And then, if you don't, go to medicare.gov. Has anybody ever been there? Well, good for y'all. Can't understand it. Can't understand it, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, it is confusing.
confusing, isn't it? Because, you know, in their, uh, I don't know why they do this, but they letter everything. You know, part A is hospital, part B is medical, part C is an advantage plan, part D is a drug plan. And what happens on the supplemental plans? They're lettered. Plan A, plan B, plan C, don't they? Have y'all noticed that? Isn't that crazy? Because it's not the same. It's not one and the same. Now you have to have Medicare Part A and B to get a supplement or an Advantage plan. But they're lettered just like the parts of Medicare, original Medicare. But your, your supplemental plans are to cover those things that Medicare doesn't cover. Now, and I say that wrong because that's not right. The Medicare supplement plan is a plan to pay for the approved amount that Medicare pays, okay? So like, have y'all seen your um, uh, benefits, what is it called that I'm trying to think of? Explanation of EOB, Explanation of Benefits. And they, how often do they come out? Quarterly, you're right, every three months. So when you get that and you see the doctor uh, charged you $100 for an office visit, how much did Medicare approve? Possibly 70 or 80. Let's go with 80 just for the easiness of it. So Medicare approved $80 and you're going to pay that. What's left? Who's going to pay that? You are. You are if you don't have a supplement, right? But if Medicare approved that $80, then your supplement will approve that $20, okay? So sometimes it's been known that if Medicare doesn't approve it, your supplement won't pay it. So that may be the problem. If that is a problem and y'all need to appeal that decision, you can call us. Or you can have Candy help you do that. You don't do appeals, okay. Well, All right, I'm wrong about that. Do they have like a pre-approval on this, like they do on regular, you know, if you're going to have something done, you have to have a pre-approval on this there or something like that? Or they do don't. Wait to tell me. Okay. Yeah. The doctor is your pre-approval. In okay. other words, if your doctor says you need it and he orders it, then Medicare usually will approve it. Yeah. Okay. If your diagnosis code is messed up. Well, the codes, yes, the you can play a whole different well, thing. It's just because we do get a lot of people that will say, well, what do you mean that they're not going to cover this? You know, before they leave and do the test, and then that's when. And they deny it to the court. You're looking for a cover down. <laughs> or, or if your doctor doesn't right. have it. Right, or it exactly doesn't have your wants. It doesn't that they have wrong. It's just. They don't know. It's in a certain way and There's so many facets of medical care. It's not just the doctor and the billing. It's, you know. It's nice when the doctor said, this is what we want, and the manager said, okay. Wouldn't it be? <laughs> However, <laughs> that doesn't always happen. And there are mistakes that are made, right? Have y'all had a, a Medicare um, fraud and abuse program done here? Not here. No? Not yet. We did money. You did Monday? I thought so. The Retired Teachers Program. Uh, Laurie McAfee came up here. So if that's something to, I'm, and I'm not picking on her because I don't think she probably does it on purpose or makes mistakes or anything. But if they do, that's fine. You're, you're allowed to make a mistake. But if you do it every day or every, you know, every month just when it's billing time, yeah, then we can kind of look at her and go, hmm. What are you doing with all that Medicare money? Because, you know, after that, it's not a mistake. It's fraud. And people can easily do that because Medicare is an open billing system, you know. And they are, that's one of the things they're trying to change. Uh, Medicare is really looking at doing a uh, concept where it's more, and I don't know how to describe it other than it would be through a plan of care that you would the doctor would bill things. Say you have a history of COPD. The doctor will know what things you're going to need. It's pretty standard how to treat that. And so they're going to submit like a care plan to Medicare 
and they think that with that managed care more focused on you know the, the individual that that will save money for Medicare and it's not going to just be a, a line item bill. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so those things they're looking at, it's not in in practice yet, but there's some, you know, uh, experimental stuff going on. So you'll hear some things that are kind of different and unusual. And don't let it scare you away. They're, they're not taking your Medicare away. And people, y'all got, we've got enough money to support us for a while and probably for a long while. You know, uh, Medicare is not free. If it were free, then we probably wouldn't have it, right? <coughs> it keeps going up, doesn't it? I'm sorry, my mouth gets so dry. So um, th that's the main thing. And if you get a raise, what's going to happen? It's going to go up. Your Part B premium will probably go up. <coughs> what happened last year? You know, you got a raise, didn't you? Did your Part B premium go up? Yes. For some, it did. It, for new en enrollees, it went to $134 a month. For those of you that have been on Medicare, it went up according to how much you make. And it went up the percentage of your raise probably, but it, it can't go up but it can't go up above what they call the whole harmless rule. In other words, they can't go up a certain uh, percentage over your income. So that's why now everybody's paying a different amount for their Part B premium which drives me crazy. I'd rather it be across the board, everybody be the same. But some of those people that have had Part B for years and years, I believe your last premium uh, was around 100 and, what was it, do y'all remember? 120 something. Y'all, nobody. Before this year, do y'all remember what it was? Well, when I started in Medicare, it was 9640. And 12 years later, we're at 134. So it keeps going up. It doesn't go lower, does it? Okay, so the, the cost of Medicare is concerning. And uh, the, the deductibles may go up uh, for Part A and Part B. We have not heard that yet. So we don't know what's going to happen. I hope, wouldn't it be nice if y'all just got a raise in your Medicare, I mean your Social Security, and not get an increase in premiums and stuff? Because, I mean, they take your raise away from you, right? Okay, so what happens on October 15th? Open enrollment for what? Medicare Part D, your drug plan, or Medicare Part C, your Advantage plan, if you want to make changes, right? Um, what happens if you don't enroll in a Part D plan? when you're eligible to enroll. You pay a penalty for the rest of your life. Isn't that sad? What happens if you don't enroll in Part B medical when you're first eligible? You pay a penalty again for the rest of your life. And how much is the penalty for Part B? 10%. So if you don't enroll this year and you're eligible this year, you pay, in addition to the $134, you will pay a 10% uh, <coughs> penalty uh, added to that. So like if you don't enroll for five years, five times 10% is 50% of 134, they'll add that to if that you have, premium. If you have a company insurance plan that they apply. You're right? exempt, that's right. As long as you're employed or your spouse is employed and y'all both, or y'all have insurance through either one, as long as you're employed and or your insurance lasts, you have that, you'll have a special enrollment period once you're through with that or you're, say you retire or your husband retires or vice versa. But yeah, you have a special enrollment period then. So there are special circumstances to the original enrollment periods, all right? How many of you are 64 and fixing to be on Medicare? Okay, 
So when's your birthday? March. March? Okay, so you have three months before, the month of, and three months after. Yeah, go tech. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> a seven month period you have to enroll in all your Medicare stuff. Okay? <coughs> the secret is this if you enroll before your birthday, your benefits will start the first day of your birthday month. Okay? If you enroll the month of or the month after, at the three months after, your benefits won't start until the month after you enroll. Okay? So that's why I tell people it's really better to enroll the three months before. And then that way you'll be ready to go when you turn 65. You can enroll, let's see, I don't know, I have to count. <laughs> July, uh, June, May, April, right? So you can start in April and then your benefits will start in June. Mm -hmm. No. That's not right. July. So April, May, June, your benefits will start July 1st. Sorry. I have to use my fingers and toes. We're just going to get serious about taking the shoes off. So, but, uh, yeah, that's the best time to enroll. And beneficiaries uh, can start comparing plans at the Medicare.gov website. How many of you have a, a computer and use it all the time? Use it. Yes, thank you, Lord. You know, what happened to the day when we didn't have to have computers? Everything's turning towards that now. So if you don't have one, get one. And get smart and do what you can for yourself. <laughs> you know, I see people all the time that actually uh, become victims <coughs> to Medicare and Medica you know, all parts of Medicare because they are not their own advocate. So they end up not enrolling because they didn't know there was a penalty. And there should because everybody sends you, you know, your mailboxes are full. Y'all get all that information. And that's what I want to say before I go on. When you get stuff in the mail, if it doesn't have this emblem on it, CMS, or <coughs> our emblem on it, AAA or I don't think I have a social security one but social security those are the ones that you need to pay attention to unless you want information from Humana or Aetna or whoever you can look at that and you know if you don't want to buy their product then just throw it away it's okay you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings you know, that post office box does not have one bit of feeling to it. Yes, I want to add, I, uh, my birthday is this month, so I just went through this. The Social Security office that I use is Panther because I live in Gray County. <coughs> and I found out that they're two months behind if you want an appointment. And so, and I was like, okay, that meant, you know, I was starting to panic because it was, I talked to them in July mm -hmm. and I thought I'm going to miss my three months. But as long as you make the appointment, then, and it's in the computer that you made the appointment before your time was up, then you kind of can start the business. Yeah. Cool, that was close, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> I thought, okay, yeah, yeah I'm going to get in trouble here. But th that's one way you can avoid that is go online. Go to ssa.gov. And you can sign up online. And it, I mean, it gives you very explicit details on how to do it. And y'all, we're smart enough to do that, I promise. It's at the third grade level. We should be able to do that, right? Okay, so if you're not... Our office is available to help you. We usually don't help people that need to go through Social Security, but we can tell you, you know, I'll go online with you and show you and tell you what you need to do. But go on there and set up mysocialsecurity.gov. And you can go find out what your benefit's going to be. I mean, you can find out everything through that. Also go to medicare.gov and sign up for my Medicare. 
So those of us that want to see if a bill was paid before we get our quarterly statements, our explanation of benefits, you can go on there and see what Medicare paid. And you can see what maybe they denied. And you can, you know, call our office and say, well, I see this happen. Can you help me with this? And we can call and we do help with appeals. You know, we've had situations where, I mean, I've had a, I think I've told this story to y'all before. We had a lady who fell on the ice and broke her hip. And she was in so much pain, the doctor had to call and tell them, you know, how much pain medication to give her to get her in the ambulance. And uh, do you know that ambulance ride was denied? Yeah, they said it wasn't medically necessary. So, <laughs> really, exactly. <laughs> so we, we filed an appeal and it got approved, right? You know, within a year, it takes forever. You know, I have a co-worker that did an appeal. It took two years, but they won. They got their money back, but it's crazy. You know, Medicare is so big and it's so uh, confusing and so many different uh, paths off of the main line of Medicare. So uh, Medicare can begin shopping and comparing plans on October 1st, Monday. They started, it, it's up there. The new plans are on Medicare.gov website. So I highly encourage any of you that can do that to go on there. Uh, watch in your mail for notices from Medicare, which is CMS, with information about changes in 2019. My husband was so excited uh, Tuesday because guess what was in the mail? His new, car. His new car. Yeah, he's an old man. He's on Medicare. So, but anyway, he got his car, and that's what this flyer is about. Watch the mail. People are getting them in Texas now. We were sixth on the list to start getting them, but that, that's where they are. And they have until April of 2019 to get all the new cards and numbers out to everyone. And what's so great about this is that it's not your Social Security number anymore. Isn't that wonderful? You're not going to be subject to having that number out there everywhere and people stealing it. So this number, unfortunately, is an 11-character number. It's a number in letters, and they're not easy to uh, memorize. If y'all memorize them, I want you to let me know, because I think you're especially smart if you can do that. But guard your card is something you need to always be in, in, uh, aware of. Yes, ma'am. So they're changing the numbers, but our old ones still out there. Don't all the hospitals and doctors still have that? Mm -hmm. They do, but they interchange. They're interchangeable now. So if you call them and say, this is my new number, then they'll put it in there. But yeah, they still have your old number. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. just hope they're not committing fraud with it. Anyway. Well, I do too, yeah. but they, they shouldn't be. But, yeah, I think after a certain period of time, they're going to require, you know, once they get all the cards out and the new numbers out, they're going to require the service people to use the new numbers. So, but, you know, first rollout, they have to interchange them to make sure they got it right. You know, so um, they tell you to throw or to, to destroy your old Medicare card. So when you get your new one, don't carry your old one with you too, they say, to go ahead and cut it up or destroy it. You're safe. The people that have your old number, you can say, oh, by the way, I have my new number. Would you like to have it? <laughs> and their doctor will say, yes, give us your number. So those are important things to remember. Uh, where else am I? You, uh, does anybody have any uh, questions so far? And I apologize if these co copies are terrible, but uh, they are talking about uh, open enrollment. Uh, this is the time to make changes to your Part D plan or uh, to your Advantage plans. Uh, be open-minded. Plans change every year, which is what I told you earlier. So uh, can your health care needs be met? Uh, don't assume your current plan is still the best for your, for your choice. Compare and see. And then open your eyes 
to the possibilities. You could uh, find a better plan that meets your needs. You may have an extra benefit that you're not aware of. I know in years past, my husband, we boy, we look every year, and we try to save every time we change. But uh, one thing that changed is he had, I think it was silver script. And one year, he had to pay a certain amount for a drug, and then the next year, it was zero. So we we're always happy when those types of changes happen. Or, you know, one of his drugs isn't on the formulary. Well, then we're not going to go with that plan if your drugs are not covered. But I can't, you can't appeal back to the, to the silver screen. I did that. I had to do that. You can. The yeah. doctor can call in for a, an exception. and But sometimes you don't always get that. So, but yeah, you sure can. That's right. Uh, anytime during the year. But if you're looking at a new year, and they're saying that your, say your levothyroxine was a tier one, now it's going to be a tier four. You might look at that and see. On one plan will be a tier one, mm -hmm. and on another plan it may be a tier two or three or whatever. So, you know, those things are something to look at. Also, your pharmacy. You know, what pharmacy do you use, and does it work well with your plan? We have some plans that uh, uh, Walmart's pretty, you know, universal, and Walgreens and CVS. But some of these uh, local pharmacies, what do y'all have here? Reds and Reds and United. Okay, so those two, you want to look and see: Does my plan work well with Reds, or does it work well better with United, or vice versa? Because isn't it interesting that same medicine may be $10 here and $5 over here. So that's something to be aware of and to educate yourself about and uh, you know, decide what plan you want uh, from those results. Okay, any questions about that? I see your little minds. Or, I have a question on some of these plans and I know this might be a silly question, but I travel different states and stuff. Do they usually? Mm -hmm. are they that, that's a very good question. Uh, there are some plants that don't go nationwide. Okay. So, um, but there are many that do. And on the Medicare.gov website, when you're looking at a plan, there will be a little bitty circle with an N in it. It's blue with a little letter N, and that means nationwide. Oh, excellent. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And there was another one? Yes, ma'am. I know it may not be um, the situation now, but I know that, um, Candy, you helped me on this, but I know there was a time that when this uh, C, the, the Advantage C uh -huh. came out, that <clears throat> it was kind of shown, correct me, Candy, that uh, that really hurt all of our rural hospitals. A lot of people that live in small towns and they think they're going to get all these benefits from that. And then when they get into it, they realize, wait a minute. So that, our Medicare sign-ups that can be used with Aquifer General Hospital and maybe local doctors many times end up being better than a more expensive plan that looks like it's fancier. Candy, can you say you're wrong or right? No, I mean, I agree with you. <coughs> but there's very limited plans in our area for the advantage anyway, but I don't think any of our doctors are contract with them. And you kind of like your own doctor. <laughs> yeah, and that's important, you know. Um, I've, I've seen Medicare, CMS, really kind of pushing or encouraging the Advantage plans. And I'm not sure if it's because it's more cost worthy for the people to be on Advantage plans. I don't know. But um, I don't know that that's always the best choice for us. Now, we had a speaker last week. We just had our Medicare training. Uh, last week, and one of the attorneys from Texas Health <coughs> Service Center, which is where we get our education from, said, you know, some Advantage plans are good for people that don't have health problems. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay. Because, I mean, you can get on a, yeah, you can get on a plan. Yeah, you can get on a plan, um, in Amarillo, it's an HMO, and it's a zero premium and a zero deductible. And you, your Part D drugs are only what your co-pays are. And you go to the doctor, and I think you pay $15. So, I mean, there are, 
but like she said, you don't have to use it very much. It's a great plan. But how about if you, after you've been 65, you're, you don't realize you're old at 65. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes a while for your body to slow you down. So if you're on those advantages and you get a horrendous, and many of you that have have sicknesses that you look at your bills and say, I don't know how, if I didn't have Medicare, I could do this. Mm -hmm. So is that, what's, 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 what does the baggage plan do better? Are, are they uh, said that we'll pay all this or did they end up with a... Horrendous? Well, like the plan that I'm talking about, um, for the first five or ten days, I can't remember, you pay a certain amount and then they pay 100% of the rest of your stay or whatever. So it's different, every plan's different. Uh, but this is the thing to remember with Advantage plans, if you're going to go there. They have to cover minimally, minimally <laughs> what Medicare pays, the original Medicare, okay? So original Medicare pays 80%, then they have to cover that too under the Advantage plans. And we've had like the situation and why some people don't like the Advantage plans is they go into a skilled nursing or a rehab hospital and the Advantage plan says, well, we'll only approve 10 days. Well, they can do that, but if they don't go past that, we can appeal that. You know, if the therapist needs more time and they're making progress and they need 10 more days, then we can help you get that because they have to cover minimum, I can't say the word, minimally, is that right? Minimally. At least. At least. Thank you. At least. <laughs> what, what Medicare covers. So. And, and see, we just need to get off the Advantage Plan subject. Because y'all don't get them here. Don't worry about it. Unless you move somewhere and you want one. Yes, ma'am. The doctor was telling me that they cover the, one of the Medicare covers the, like the ambulance and the medevac. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, there may be a new uh, insurance that's going to cover, yeah, which is different than original Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans. But if you have to be medevaced somewhere, Medicare can pay that too if it's medically necessary. See, that's where the terms come from. Y'all remember, medically necessary. And then we have to prove that it's medically necessary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's do that. Okay. Okay, so this question was, can you speak to creditable coverage? I have trouble with that too. Uh, creditable coverage means as good or better than Medicare. So if your insurance company with your employer is as good or better than Medicare, then you, and you're on that past 65, then that's okay. You're going to be uh, able to have a special enrollment period. And they want proof of your creditable coverage. Okay, so they'll have you get a letter from your employer saying that yes, she had creditable coverage, and then Medicare is okay with that for a special enrollment period. Okay, and that also is tied to uh, supplemental plans, which we haven't even talked about, right? Supplemental plans this year are going to change. Um, some people are grandfathering in on Plan F, and uh, that means you still have your deductible for your hospital and Part B paid, but uh, those new to Medicare and buy Plan F, you will have to pay the $183 deductible for Part for Part B, okay? So everybody on new that are new to Medicare and who are enrolling in supplemental plans will have to be paying your Part B deductible. It's a once a year deductible, $183, okay? If you're grandfathered in, in other words, if you had Plan F 10 years ago and you still have Plan F, you don't have to do that. From my understanding, 
Now, if I'm wrong, you can call and say, Lisa, you lied to me. But that's what I understand. It's primarily for the new people that start now. They don't, this, don't shoot the messenger, but they may do away with Plan F. Okay, even though you're grandfathered in right now, they may fade that out completely. What do you know about Plan G? Plan G is the same as a Plan F, only you pay your Part B deductible. $180. Yes. Right, right. It usually is. Uh, G is cheaper. G is cheaper. G has been considerably cheaper. Yes. G is usually considerably cheaper for the entire year, and you're only going to save $183 a year. But if you look at F compared to G, usually the premium is fifty dollars or more a month cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it's very much worth it to look at the G. And I will tell you that uh, when you're new to Medicare, you have the only open enrollment period to get a guaranteed issue right. Do y'all know what that means? Do you know what a guaranteed issue right is? That means they don't look at your health history. They don't say, well, she had uh, some uh, cancer cells show up on her skin biopsy, and, you know, we're not, we don't want to ever, we really don't want to injure her. <laughs> but they can't do that. They can't even ask a health question during your seven month open enrollment period. What is it? Three months before your birthday. The month of, three, three months, months after. after. So they give you that seven month window to get a supplemental plan of your choice and uh, you cannot be turned down because of health history, okay? Yes, ma'am. So what if you are already on a supplement and you want to change, can they look at your history? Yes, they can. If you're already on a supplement and you've passed your open enrollment period, you uh, are subject to underwriting or health health history. So, okay, yes, ma'am. Also, on supplemental insurance, are there any repercussions for changing, like a, a penalty, or or uh, that you can't go back uh, you, each year? You can change if you wish to. Without any repercussions, there are no penalties to change your supplemental plan, other than underwriting. They have the right to go back and look. So it once again, insurance is great as long as you're healthy. <laughs> you know they can't deny you uh, because of health history. But that seven month window of open enrollment, uh, when you turn 65, uh, that's when to purchase your supplemental plan. Can they drop you? Can they drop you? When? After you've had some medical problems. <laughs> You know, I've never heard of that happening, but I'm assuming they but can. they don't have to pick you up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only time, like, it's really good for disabled people when they turn 65 because they don't have to map to pass that medical questionnaire. Right. Where every other time you do, if you're outside that window. Right. So you can switch, but you have to pass medical questions. Yeah, but if you stay with the same plan, well, that's then you fine. should be fine. Plan won't drop yet. No, they I don't think they do. I've never heard of that happening. As long as you keep paying your bill, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I've never heard anybody cancel for a supplemental plan because of their expenses. But they do have a limit to what Medicare will pay, don't they? We just found that out, didn't we? You know, Medicare only pays a certain amount of lifetime reserve days. In other words, if you are in the hospital up to 100 days, you have 60 lifetime reserve days to use one time in your life. Okay, so if you're in a hospital for 160 days, they're, they're done. So your supplemental plan won't pay it either, right? Unless you're doing therapy, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, because that's a supplemental, that's, Supplemental plans only pay what? What original Medicare approves, right? Okay? Is that clear as mud? Okay, any other questions? Do you have, are there agencies like the Lava 
Area Agency on Aging? Yes, there's one in Lubbock. There's, uh, they're usually attached to or in connection with a council on government. So uh, some of the, like ours is Panhandle Regional Planning Commission. The one in Lubbock is South Plains Council on Government. And so I don't know, I mean, but you can Google, Google any area agency on aging for your county and it'll pull up the nearest one that covers your county. Yes, you do. That's where we are. Our area agency on aging is in Amarillo at the Panhandle Regional Planning Commission on the third floor. <laughs> so if you can't make it up the elevator, let us know and we'll meet you downstairs. <laughs> so, we have to go down a half a flight of stairs to the bathroom every day. So I hate that building. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Have I confused you a lot? Yep. Oh, I did want to tell you about the yellow sheet. This is a, a sheet that shows your income amount and your eligibility amount for income and resources <coughs> and what program you would qualify for. So if you'll go down to the bottom where it says LIS, full extra help, the one right before the partial extra help, that is we apply for that through Social Security, and that is only for your prescription drug plans. All of the ones above that is for your Medicare programs, your Medicare savings programs. So if your gross income is less than $1,032 a month, and your resources like savings, CDs, any cash resources, is under 7,560 total, you can, you can be approved for the QMB, Qualified Medicare Beneficiary Program. And look across there, look what it pays for. It pays your Part B premium, it pays your deductibles for Part A and B, and the co-insurance for eligible Medicare services. So if that 20% that uh, Medicare doesn't pay, if you qualify, it would pay that, so you don't have to buy a supplement. <coughs> so if you're fortunate enough to be poor, it's kind of a, <laughs> anyway, you can get these benefits. So that's what that means, and that's why I try to give them to people because if it's not you, you might know someone that could benefit from that. And then on the other side, it shows Medicare, I'm sorry, Medicaid in nursing homes and in-home assistance, community care for the aged and disabled. You know, the Health and Human Services pays for like a provider to come in the home and take care of your home, your laundry, shopping, meals, things like that. That is the income criteria and resource criteria for that program, okay? And yes, you can get both. Uh, other than the QI1 program on this side, you can't have that, the CCAD program and that. You have to choose which one you want. Okay? Let me make you aware of something. How many of you have heard of MERP? Nobody knows what MERP is? It's a funny name, isn't it? Well, it's Medicaid Estate Recovery Program. Okay? What? Medicare, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, okay. Medicaid okay, okay. Estate Recovery Program. So, do y'all know how much it costs to be, live in a nursing home? Oh, how much? Okay. <laughs> do you have enough money to pay for a nursing home? No. Okay. Do you have long-term care insurance? Yeah. If you do, great. But most of us don't have money to pay for long-term care insurance, I mean, long-term care care in a nursing home, right? So most of us have to go on Medicaid. And uh, if you do, Texas has decided years ago that they have a right to your estate when you die. All of that is depending on how many dollars you spent out of the Medicaid program and what the value of your estate is, right? So some people that are in the nursing home for 10 years 
have spent a lot of Medicaid dollars, and when they died, they had this little $90,000 home over here on the corner. Medicare, Medicaid, pardon me, has a right to file a claim against that estate to pay back the dollars, all right? Well, I just want to say, Medicaid is not in the real estate business. So they want to work out with whoever to, you know, get that paid. We are not, I say we, we, are, we do not want you all to think that if you get any Medicaid dollars, you're going to come after your house. Because there is an out for that now, and it's called the transfer of deed upon death. That means you can give your house to whoever you want to have it when you die. If you don't want it to go to Medicaid, and you have a transfer of deed upon death, it won't go to Medicaid. Okay? Does that have to be in X amount of time before you death? It has to be in effect before you die. <coughs> attorney through the Texas Legal Service Center so you don't have to pay for an attorney because people on Medicaid can't pay for an attorney right so we have access to those programs if you need help with long-term care financing for your loved one or if you're thinking well mama's gonna have to be on Medicaid we're spending all our money you know we can't do that with resources now, I'll tell you, other than your home, okay? If you have a, a, an estate worth thousands of dollars, you can seek and help with an attorney to get it put in a trust, and then Medicaid does not file a claim on the trust, a living trust, okay? There are options like that. But if you have, like I said, you just happen to have a little house on the corner and that's all you have, then it's a good thing to transfer and you want to keep it in the family, you want your daughter or son to have it, then you can do that transfer of deed upon death thing and that will save your property, okay? But they won't come after your loved ones for... They do not ever come after the loved ones. <coughs> Unless your name is on that house. I mean, and that after the death, it doesn't matter, right? Okay. Y'all understand that? If you buy your house, if you buy your mama's house before she dies for a dollar, they can make you pay that back. So don't do that. No. The Medicaid dollar. Dollars. Okay? But, well, besides all that, she won't qualify for Medicaid. You can do that. So, Okay? Don't be trying to hide money, bury it in the backyard, you know. The best thing to do, and I, I go through this a lot with people and families. I understand wanting to protect your resource amounts, I get it. But the best thing is to pay for good care for your life. Right? That's what it's for. Your mom and dad saved that money so that they could, in case it rains, one day, they might need it, right? Well, going having to get medical care in a nursing home is a good reason. Pay for their care, you know. Like my daughter said, Papa, you don't want on Medicaid. Because Medicaid limits your choices. They don't get everything. Medicaid reimbursement in Texas is 48th in the nation. Lowest. <laughs> yeah, aren't we proud? But that's why nursing homes struggle to meet the needs of the residents because they don't get enough funding to take care of them. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, go to the polls. <laughs> call your senators. <laughs> call your senators and your uh, congressmen, and, uh, especially in Texas. But that's all I have to say. Thank y'all for having me. And I,